Yes, I'll still bless you in the middle of the storm, in the middle of my trial. I'll still bless you in the middle of the road when I don't know where to go. I'll still bless you in the middle of my storm, in the middle of my trial. I'll still bless you. And so, Father, that's our declaration this evening, that from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, oh God, we'll bless your name. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, oh God, you're still worthy. You're still good. You're still mighty. You're still wonderful. You are still faithful. You are still just God. You are still Abba, our Father. You are still Alpha and Omega and everything in between. And for that, oh God, we will bless you. You are still the one that saves and sets free. And for that, we will bless you. You are still the one that heals and delivers and for that we will bless you you are still the one that restores and for that we will bless you oh god you are worthy you are worthy you are worthy of all of our adoration of all the glory and of all the honor and for that oh god we part our lips and we bless your name we magnify you and we give you glory oh god we thank you for another opportunity to dive into your word we thank you oh god that your word is a lamp unto our feet your word gives us direction your word guides us your word feeds us it is the bread of life and so we thank you oh god for another time to feast on you. We pray that right now, Lord God, we, you just you just come in and touch our hearts, oh God, and make our hearts your fertile ground, oh God. Make our ears attentive unto, unto what you're saying, oh God. We block out distractions, oh God, and we shake off the day and we set our thoughts on you. We set our focus on you, oh God. Our hearts are ready to receive. Speak now like never before, oh God. Let it be a word, oh God a word that gives us what we need to keep going. Let it be a word, oh God, that gives us what we need to live this life for you out loud, oh God. Breathe in this moment, oh God. Speak in this moment, oh God. Inhabit this place, oh God, and have your holy way, oh God. I decrease as you increase, and I just ask that you would fill these airways, oh God, with your presence and with your power and with your anointing, oh God, that your people will be blessed by this time with you. We love you, oh God. We thank you. We believe that it is so and so it is. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Monday, you guys. You made it. It is what, 6.37 on a Monday? 
So let me see those hearts on the screen. If you're just grateful to be here, if you're just grateful you made it through the day, you're still living, you're still breathing, you still got the activity of your limbs, you got a roof over your head. Let me see hearts if you're grateful that you're here. Um, this is our opportunity. You know what I always say, grab your phone, hit that share button. Sharing is care and let somebody know that we are on and we are live. Text your mother, your neighbor, your dog walker, your mailman, and let them know that there is a word from the Lord. I get to be your host for today. I'm Alexis. Nice to see you guys. I know usually you see me, you hear me on the 6 a.m. prayer call, but our amazing visionary had this bright idea that you should see our faces. So Nice to meet you. Um, say hello to me in the chat so I can know you're here and you're watching. Let me know where you're watching from, whether it's your home or your car. And if you're ready for the word, just type I'm here and I'm ready. Amen. So just to give you a brief recap, this is our fourth Bible study of the year. We're traveling through the book of Ruth for the entire year. And our topics are loss, love, and legacy. Um, the first person that spoke was Tisha, and she taught us what the definition of loss is. She told us that loss is the fact or process of losing something or someone or grief caused by being deprived of something or someone. Then she told us that in order to navigate this thing called life, we have to address the loss, meaning don't just run past it, allow ourselves to feel and experience what we're feeling in those moments as we give it to God. Don't just say, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored if you're really going through something and you're really navigating a season of, God, I'm frustrated, God, I'm mad, God, I, I thought you were setting me up to win, this feels like an L, help me out. He is our father, right? And the same way you can go to your, your earthly parents and say, I need you right now. That's the same thing we can do to our heavenly father. He's always present. And he knows what you're feeling, but it's that moment to be vulnerable with him so that he can come in and do that heart transplant for you and that mind renewal. Then she told us, um, that it's so important not to substitute that loss with something or someone else. It's so easy to substitute that loss with, let's say you, that loss was a relationship. So miss, uh, what, what's that song that says men are like buses, miss one, next 15, another one's coming. So not just jumping from, from one relationship to another, or let's say the loss was um, an opportunity, really taking time to heal from that before you jump into another one. She reminded us that loss is not just exclusive to losing people, but it could also be moments and hopes and dreams. Then Sharisa came and told us that, listen, going through seasons of loss, they suck. They just do. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Jesus says it this way. And you know, when Jesus says it, it must be true. So in John 16, 33, Jesus says that in this life, you will have trials. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say might. He said possibly. He didn't say should, could. He said in this life, you will have trials, but to be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. And so that same overcoming power Jesus has, we also have it. But he's basically saying, don't be surprised when you have those moments where you're disappointed or frustrated. As long as you are living and breathing, there will be these things called seasons. So if you were to look out your window right now, the sun is shining and it's finally almost feeling like spring for real. And like, I didn't wear a jacket today and the leaves are blooming and everything's green. But six months from now, what's gonna happen? Those leaves are gonna wither. It's gonna get dark early. Everything's gonna be burnt orange outside. There is this thing called seasons. So just as much as we have those mountain moments, Jesus promises we will have those valley moments, but we what? The promise is you will get through them. The same way he conquered death and hell in the grave, there's nothing that we can't conquer because his power is at work within us. And then Shirley came and told us last month that one way that we can conquer, one way that we get these Ws, one way that we overcome those valley moments is having kingdom connection. You can't do this thing called life alone. You need somebody that to say, since you can't pick yourself up, I'm going to pick you up for you and dust you off. Since you won't, says, you won't get up. I'm going to help you get up. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to war with you. These women that you've seen, plus Dominique and plus Anita and plus my mentors, are the people that literally did that for me. I can remember when I was battling suicide seven years ago, and those women, the women that you've seen on, on these, these lives, were like, hey, we want to take you to dinner tonight. And I remember having nothing and literally not even having a will to live. And I said, no, you guys go ahead. I'm just going to, you know, just going to end it all today. And they called, and well, I didn't say that to them in my head. I said that, but I said, no, no, thank you for the dinner invite. And they called back and said, no, we really feel like the Lord wants you to come to this dinner. So we don't care if we got to pick you up. We don't care if we have to pay for you and your child to eat, but we, we really feel an unctioning of the Lord that you're supposed to be at this dinner tonight. And that dinner saved my life. 
what happened was the enemy had me feel, he had me isolated, right? And feeling like I was alone. And when you're alone, what happens? What happened to Eve when she was alone in the garden? The enemy was able to get in her ear and start saying, did the Lord really say that? And that's the season I was in. I wasn't strong enough in the Lord to say, okay, God, um, your word says this and I can rebuke the enemy with your word. I believe everything the enemy was saying, but these women picked me up and they dusted me off and they prayed for me and they warned me. They, you know how the Bible says that we should put on the breastplate of this and the helmet of this. They literally put on the whole armor of God and went into battle for me. And they're the reason that I'm still here today. And so that's what Shirley told us last month that listen, we have these amazing tools to overcome. We do have the word and we do have prayer and we do have fasting, but another tool we have is kingdom connection. Think about it. When God created the heavens and he created the, the earth in those six days, he made all those things and said they're good. Then he made us and said, we're very good. The first time we hear God say something was not good, it was us being alone. And so Shirley was reminding us that in those seasons of loss, in those seasons of disappointment, in those seasons of frustration, get with your brothers and sisters in Christ, get with your mentors, get with those people that can pray for you when you can't pray for yourself and you will come up from that place. So, that brings us to tonight. That was a long recap. Sorry, guys. So that brings us to tonight. If you've got your Bibles open, we are in the book of Ruth, chapter one. Um, if you haven't ever read Ruth, one of my favorite books in the Bible, four chapters long, some of the best reading you'll ever have, especially if you do the message version. Short book full of so much meat. So we're in Ruth, chapter one, and we're starting at verse number 20 where it says, don't call me Naomi, she told them, and I'm in the NIV version. Don't call me Naomi, she told them, call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. And that's Ruth chapter one, verses 20 through 21. So just to catch you up in case you missed the last ones, we're, we're finding Naomi who had a husband, had her daughters-in-law, and had her sons. Her husband dies. And so in those biblical days, your husband is your, he's your provision. He's, he's the one that goes in and, and provides the income for the household. He's your provision, he's your covering, he's your protection. So when Naomi loses her husband, it seems like desolation, but there's still hope, right? Because she's got her sons. What happens? Her sons die as well. So that means Typically, what would happen is, okay, well, I got my son, so there's still some provision there. No. So all the breadwinners are now gone. Naomi's got nothing. My provision is gone. My covering's gone. My protection is gone. I've got nothing. Can you imagine how she felt? Can you imagine how desolate she might have felt in that moment? Like, what was comfortable, what I knew, what I knew was going to be a source of me making it to tomorrow is now gone. What looks like, okay, she just lost some men in her life. No, she's also lost hope right? What a dark place to be in when you lose your hope. So she goes to her daughters-in-law and says, listen, I love you and I mean it, but there's nothing I can offer you. Go back to your homes and, and go back to what's comfortable for you and build another life for yourselves. And Orpah says, okay, mother-in-law, love you, mean it, do this, I'll holler. No Bible version says that. That's the Alexis, Alexis version, but Orpah does leave Naomi. Ruth, however, says, listen, let it not be so. Let your people be my people. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Let your people be my people and let your God be my God. And may the Lord deal with me ever so severely, if anything, but death shall separate us. So Ruth is the literal definition of ride or die. She declares out of her mouth, may the Lord deal with me ever so severely, if anything, but death should separate us. We all need some roots in our lives. Ruth says, I know, we, I know we don't know what tomorrow holds. I know we don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. I know we don't really have a plan for how we're going to make it, but I'm connected to you. I'm going to do life with you until the wheels fall off. So that's where we find Naomi in this verse. Naomi says, listen, don't call me Naomi, which means pleasant. You can just call me Mara. And so our first point for today, if you're taking notes, is what name are you calling yourself in this season? Here is Naomi who's like, listen, don't call me blessed and highly favored, call me busted and disgusted. Don't call me blessed in the city and blessed in the fields, call me lack, I ain't got nothing. Don't call me more than a conqueror, call me, I quit, I give up, tap out, the enemy wins, I'm over this thing called life. Has anybody ever been there? 
where you're like, listen, I can't, I, I hear what y'all are saying. I know y'all saying my outlook is going to get better, but I can't hear none of that right now. So don't call me that. This is the name I choose to answer to. So your first point for today is what name are you calling yourself? And does it identify what the name God is calling you? Right here she is speaking out of her mouth. Listen, no, call me bitter. And God is saying, but that's not the destiny I have for you. So in your situation, you may have had somebody that walked out of your life because we're talking about loss, right? So your loss might have been a relationship. And so you're calling yourself, mm -mm, no, I'm just going to do me. It's a hot girl summer season for me. And God is saying, but that's not lining up with what I'm calling you. I'm calling you virtuous and I'm calling you righteous. You may have lost your job or your source of income last year because 2020 was just what it was. You may have been like me and been a parent with a stay-at-home student and just lost your patience or whatever it is. And God is saying, well, no, don't call yourself unemployed. Call yourself being positioned for greatness. And God is saying, no, don't call yourself a, a parent who's losing their mind. Call yourself, um, call, how do I say it? Havilah Clinton says it this way. She says, don't call your kids terrorists. Call them a, a, a tree in seed form. Right. So don't call your situation what it is. Don't call yourself what 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 the situation looks like. Call yourself what I call you. I call you blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I call you above and not beneath. I call you a lender and not the borrower. What name are you giving yourself in this season? Are you giving your, yourself a name that attributes to the darkness? Or are you giving yourself a name that attributes to the light that God has given you? The light that he's given you on the inside to break free from that thing and the light that he's given you on the outside, meaning a little bit of hope that you're going to make it through this. What name are you giving yourself in this season? What's in a name? I'm glad you asked. So if we were to flip a couple, a couple books back in the Bible, right? Something happens when God changes your name, right? He took Abram and made him Abraham, not just father, but father of many. He took Sarai and changed her name to Sarah. He took Jacob, the trickster, the heel, and changed his name to Israel. Something amazing happens when God changes your name because God, there's anointing and destiny and purpose attached when God changes your name, right? God is calling you not where you are right now, but where he's taking you to. There's something amazing that happens when the glory falls and God changes your name. But what happens when we don't win up God, wait on God and we change our names ourselves right the Bible tells us that out of the out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks but guess what else that power and life and death lie in the tongue and so every time you speak something contrary to the word God says okay that's how you feel cool let us remember that God is going to get his 40 out of you either way you decide whether it's 40 days or 40 years watch what you speak in watch what you call yourself in this season I can remember when I was hosting all these single groups and everyone was speaking, oh my gosh, you a wife, you a wife, you getting ready, you a wife. And I was Naomi. My, at this point, I had gone through two divorces by the age of 30. So I was, I was like, nope, don't call me none of that. My phone is dry. My phone is a Sahara desert. Ain't nobody texting me. Ain't nobody checking for me. Stop speaking wife over me. The ratio of good kingdom men is one to seven. It's seven of us. And one of them I ain't got no shot. I'm a single mama and a two-time loser. Don't call me nobody's wife. And so the Lord had to, had to quicken me and he had to arrest my heart and say, really, Alexis? Really? Am I not the God of miracles, signs, and wonders? You don't just have my written word of the things that I can do and how suddenly I can move, but you've seen me do it in your own life and you have the nerve to not reach up and grab it and not reach up and receive the anointing of wife. You better reach up and grab it. And I had to repent and say, you know what, Lord, you're right. Even though it looks desolate, even though it looks like there's no hope, I'm going to receive it the next time somebody spoke it over me. And then I was like, oh, the Lord literally changed my name. He gave me the brand, they'll go, Jesus. So I say all of that to say, what name are you calling yourself in this season? And does it line up with the name that God has given you? God calls you loved. God calls you redeemed. God calls you healed. God calls you restored. God calls you productive. God calls you righteous. God calls you vindicated. God calls you blessed. What name are you giving yourself in this season? And does it line up with the name that the Lord has given you? And then point number two, what name are you answering to in this season? So let's say you're not like Mara. Slash Naomi. Let's say you're not like the old Alexis. Let's say you haven't changed your name, but you're ascribing to what the world says you are. This world we live in that is is um where social media likes and social media followers and followers indicate your success. Ain't none of that in the Bible. God predestines our success. God ordains our success. You know what real success is? Success is walking in your purpose and living your life the way God ordained for you to live it. It ain't got nothing to do with no social media likes. Or even down to my own testimony, I can remember my, it was the eve of my 30th birthday and everyone was coming over to celebrate. And I remember thinking, these people are out here for me 
and I can't even unction up enough strength to do a fake smile because I am a two-time divorce day by 30. Who wants to say that sentence out loud? It doesn't even taste good in my mouth. And then again, the Lord had to rest my heart and say, yeah, that's what the world calls you. But what do I call you? Let us remember, I'm not just the God of a second chance. I'm the God of chance after chance after chance after chance. My word even declares that a faithful man falls seven times, but he gets back up. So guess what? The world may say you're a two-time divorcee. The world may say you're hopeless. The world may say you're rejected. But guess what I say? I say you're accepted and beloved. I say you're surrounded. I say you're covered. I say you're protected. I say you're blessed. And yes, Yes, you will be a wife. So what name are you answering to in this season? And I'll tell you are better than that. Let's say you've lost your job and so the world says you're, you're unemployed. You've been applying for jobs forever and the world says you're overlooked. But guess what God says? God says, no, I've called you to be fruitful. I've called you to produce some things. So we're not going to respond to what the world says. You're going to get up and today you're going to start walking out, that, uh, walking out what I call you. What name are you answering to in this season? What name have you let the world give you and you just accepted it and said, well, this must be what it is. Not so, not so. What name are you answering to and does it line up with where God is taking you? I know how your right now looks and I know you're weary and I know you're tired, but God says, be not weary in well doing for in due season, you will reap if you faint not. You gonna have your harvest, regardless of how long you've been sowing, regardless of how much you've planted, regardless of how long it feels like it's taking, you will have your harvest. You just can't ascribe to what the world says and the world's time clock. What name are you answering to? And does it align with where God is taking you? You not Mara, you not bitter, you not broken, you not busted, you not broke. You the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. You not sick. I mean, that's, that's man's testimony, and we praise God for doctors in their wisdom. Hallelujah. However, you're going to have your healing. By his stripes, you are healed. Yesterday was such a difficult day physically for me, and I literally had to war and say, not so, not so. By his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. He is Jehovah Rapha, and I have his healing regardless of how my body feels. I have his healing. I walk in his, in his, his, his healing and his wholeness in my life, and I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What name are you answering to? I'm not answering to sick. I don't need no report because I know what the Lord calls me, and I know what I answer to. So that's your point number two today. What name are you answering to? And as we segue into part uh, point number three, thank you guys for always allowing us to be transparent and vulnerable. I can remember after the first divorce going through a season of, we're just going to call it what it is, alcoholism. And I can remember the very day that the light bulb came on that this is not the way I'm supposed to live. At that point, I was answering to the name life of the party. I was answering to the name party girl. I was answering to the name best bartender in the family. And so my baby had to come up to me and it was, it was five o'clock and five o'clock was happy hour every day, every day. Came home from work and my, my, my baby, my four-year-old had the shot glasses all lined up. This is what we do. Mom came home, it's party time. And the light bulb came on. Is this the name that I want to show my daughter that I live by? I don't want to answer to the name life of the party. I don't want to answer to the name happy hour girl. I don't want to answer to the name sloshy parent. I want to be a good mother. And so that brings us to point number three. How did Naomi get her name back, breathe, get up and grow. Write that down, highlight it, underline it, text it to your neighbors, grieve, get up and grow. I had to make a decision that day that I've been in this barren place too long. I've been in this place of famine too long. And there's so many times that we read the word and we leave it there, right? So you read the word famine and you're thinking, oh, they don't have any food. What about when you're emotionally famine, right? When you just have nothing left to give because you gave it all in that last relationship. You gave it all on that. You gave all your hope on that last dream. You gave all your resources on that last, that last um, entrepreneurial vision you had. What happens when you're emotionally in a famine? What happens when you're socially in a famine, right? When you're in that season where you look to your left and your right and you don't know who to call, you're isolated. You know, the enemy makes you think you don't have any friends. You don't have anybody you can lean on. What happens when you're in a spiritual famine, right? When you go into church Sunday after Sunday and you're like, God, is there a word for me? And, and the worship songs I used to listen to that I love, God, they're not touching my heart the same way. 
What happens when you're in a famine? I love how Sharisa said it last month. She said, Naomi was in a famine, but guess what? She said, you know what? I can't stay in this place. I got to move. I got to go where the Lord is sending me. I got to go where there's a harvest. And so if you find yourself in that place, and remember, remember when you're listening to these messages, don't just think, oh, this might apply to my friend. Think about yourself too. Think about any losses you may have taken, any L's by the world standard that you may have taken, a loss of an opportunity, a closed door. I think about last month and how my baby had worked so hard for this particular dream and and truly I watched her and I watched the other people pursuing that dream and in my mind there was no way God was going to close that door so imagine my my shop when on my wedding day I'm getting ready to walk down the aisle and she calls me crying my mother Lord didn't open that door for me what happens to us now this is all I knew I I put all my hopes into this I put all my sweat equity into this and God didn't open that door for me what happens when your hopes become a famine right we got to do like Naomi and we got to move from that place. We got to move from that place of brokenness. We got to move from that place of bitterness. We got to move from that place of emptiness. You have to grieve, get up and grow. Take your minute. I believe everything Sharisa and Letitia said, you take that minute and you cry if you have to cry and you wail if you have to wail. I am known for that. Me and Abba got a great relationship. I am truly a wailer. I believe he hears my cries and groans and he recognizes which daughter I am. I am that one. Wail if you have to. Take your moment, but don't stay in that place. Take your moment, but don't make it a monument. Don't land there forever. Grieve, cry, wail, phone a friend, but then you gotta get up and then you gotta grow. My baby, when she's having a really tough week, she'll call me and say, mama, I need to have a break party. And so what that is, her way of grieving is, we go to Dollar Tree, and we get a dollar plate because we ain't finna break my real ones. And she just writes out her frustrations. I'm hurt because of this. I'm disappointed because of this. I'm worried because of this. And then we take that plate and break it as if as as an external sign that whatever bothered me last night, it can't bother me no more. Whatever was heavy on me last night, I'm not carrying that into my, my tomorrow. I gotta let it go. My husband likes to have burn parties. Take it and write it down, Alexis. I need you to write it down so I can, he has a fire pit in our other backyard so we can burn that thing and say, you know what? Never no more is this thing gonna weigh us down. Never no more is this thing gonna come into our covenant. We gotta burn it away. We gotta burn it away. The Bible tells us that he gives us beauty for ashes, but guess what? In order for you to get that beauty, sometimes things gotta burn. Sometimes seasons got to burn. Sometimes relationships got to burn. Sometimes opportunities got to burn so that God can give you the fullness of his glory and show you that he does give you beauty for that thing, that he does give you glory for that thing. Usually, and I always quote that scripture that says, these are light afflictions compared to the glory to be revealed, the glory that's to come. I know it hurts right now. I know you're frustrated right now. I know you're tired right now, but these are light afflictions. If you don't give up, if you keep pressing, there will be this. There will be open doors after this. There will be breakthrough after this. You will smile again. You will love again. You will believe again. You will dream again. And God's going to do it again. You just can't stay in that place. Grieve. But then you got to get up and then you got to grow. How do we get up? I'm glad you asked. We get up by prayer and we get up by fasting. And, and I love that we finally come to a place that we realize that prayer had, doesn't have to be this long, dramatic thing. Sometimes my prayer to God is truly, Lord, help me. I'm not going to make it if you don't help me. Sometimes my prayer is just laying my head on my chest and moaning unto God because the word says that he even understands our moans. You don't have to pray like Tish. You don't have to pray like me. God understands your prayer language. You just got to talk to the Father. That's all he wants because what happens is then this beautiful conversation happens. You say, God, I'm tired. He says, I'm giving you strength. You say, God, I'm worried. He says, I'm giving you peace. Prayer is just a conversation with the Father. That's how we get up. Fasting is how we get up. You hear the Lord so clearly when you take that moment and consecrate yourself for him. You hear his voice and then he gives you direction. Naomi wasn't just leaving the, the barren land and going to abundance all haphazardly. She knew where to go. How do we know where to go? We fast and we hear from the Lord. How do we know where to go? We get in his word and we hear from the Lord. If you haven't learned how to hear his voice yet, don't understand the sound of his voice. That's okay. He's giving you his written word. Get in that word. Download the Bible app and download a devotional for exactly how you feel. Frustration devotional. Worried about my marriage devotional. Worried about my kids devotional. And they're all there. And my next point, phone a friend. Guess what? You can do the devotionals with somebody. I love that the four of us had devotional together. And I can tell when I haven't been on too long because I'll start getting notifications. Shirley did the devotional today. Did you, Alexis? Nope. Let me get right on it, Jesus. Get in the word to get you some guidance, get you some kingdom mentors, get you some kingdom friends. I would not be where I am today if God had not sent me some people that know how to pray for me. 
I'm in a new season in my life and I've gone from barren to fruitful and I thank you, Jesus, for my marriage. But can I be honest with you? Marriage is hard. I thought being single was hard. Marriage is hard, but I've got some friends, some of them single and some of them married that all I got to do is say 911 and they know how to pray for me and they know how to war for me. Judgment free, get you some people that you can lean on, get you some people that can pray for you when you don't have the words. And can I be even a little bit more transparent? get you a counselor. And I get it. We've all went through some financial changes last year. You're thinking that counseling is this astronomical amount. Can I set you free real quick? Call Gateway and call Impact and they will work with you. They will work with your budget. Never no more do we have to let, let finances be a reason why we can't get the help that we need. Yes, we need the spiritual tools, but I also believe that God downloads wisdom into these counselors to help you move from that barren place. You can even call UAB and their students with the help of a, a licensed instructor can help you get your next level of freedom and they will work with your income get in a small group and can i also set you another level of freedom get in the freedom small group at our church at, at the worship center hallelujah thank you god for bishop wisdom at church of the highlands get in a freedom small group and take it seriously and those 12 weeks will change your life you want to see miracles signs and wonders start walking with jesus for real you want to see breakthrough in your life start being intentional about your journey you grieve and you get up and you get grow and you grow you don't have to stay in that barren place you don't need to stay in that barren place there's some things that god wants to do in your life but he needs you to participate this christian life this kingdom life is jesus life is a participation sport. There are no bench warmers. Why do you think it says lay aside every heavy weight? You got to give it to them. Why do you think it says pray without ceasing? That's an action item. Why do you think it says come? Come unto me who are weary and heavy laden. There's an action item. You got to give it to them. Cast your cares on me because I care for you. You got to give it to them. It's not going to happen by accident. Your next level is not going to happen by accident. Your name change is not going to happen by accident. It's going to happen by you participating with heaven. I love that the scripture says that before, we, while we're even yet praying, before we're even done praying that the Lord is already yet hearing and he's already yet answering. And I'm so grateful for that. I believe that once we pray a thing, once we decree a thing, that the heavens are already responding and we're just waiting on the manifestation in the earth. But you know how that manifestation happens? You got to participate with heaven. You got to partner with heaven for your breakthrough. You got to get up from that place. You got to get out of your bed. It's not going to happen by retail therapy. It's not going to happen by restaurant therapy. It's not going to happen by another relationship. It's going to happen because you decided to partner with heaven for your breakthrough. What's in a name? What's in a name? I don't care before we started the Zoom, whatever name you gave this season, we're changing it today. We're calling it temporary. We're calling it being set up for a breakthrough. We're calling it being set up for a comeback. We're calling it walking in my purpose. We're calling it light afflictions, light afflictions, light afflictions, because you know what his word also promises? That his yoke is easy and his burden is light. We're changing the name of this season. We're changing what's coming out of our mouths. We're changing what we're decreeing and we're making sure that it lines up with the Lord and what he he wants to do in our lives and who he has said we are even before he formed us in our mother's womb what name are you answering to in this season and are you ready to grieve to get up and grow the growth happens when we are mature enough to say god this hurts but i know you're gonna do something with this pain I know you're going to do something with that closed door. I know you're going to do something with this loss. The world says it's an L, but I know you're setting me up for a W because you keep your word. And you said that all things work together for the good of those that love you. And I called according to your purpose. I love you and I'm called. So help me to understand how you're going to use this. Help me to see, Lord God, not to give up right here. Because if I just go through, yea, though I walk through the valley, yea, though I walk through the valley, but there's something on the other side of through. And that when I look to my left and to my right, oh God, you are walking with me. And I thank you for it. Growth happens when we change our thinking, when we're transformed by the renewing in our mind. And we say, God, you didn't let it take me out i'm still standing i'm still breathing i've still got your breath in my body so you're going to use this for your glory you're going to use this for my good it may hurt right now but guess what god you are jehovah rapha and you are you are the mind regulator you are the pain medication so do what you do in my life oh god and make all things well and make all things work for my good growth happens when i recognize that this valley season is only a precursor to the mountain that you're taking me to you can't prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies if i don't 
don't have enemies, if I don't have hardships, if I don't have negativity, if I don't have gossip, if I don't have hurt and I don't have pain. So Lord, I'm going to sit back and let you prepare this table for me. And I'm going to partner with heaven and I'm going to have faith and believe that something good is going to come from this loss. Because if you let me take an L publicly, you're going to let me take a W publicly too. And I recognize that you're more concerned about what's going on on the inside of me than what's going on around me. So as you're circumcising my heart and as you're renewing my mind, do something with this hurt. I put it in your hands, oh God. It's better in your hands than my own. I can't do nothing with it. So I surrender to you and I receive your growth. We receive your growth, oh God. We're getting ready to close. If you would just posture your heart. I don't know what your L looked like. I told you mine. I'm not ashamed anymore because I'm not who I used to be. He changed my name. And he's yet changing yours if you let him. If you let him. Let us pray, Father. We thank you so much for your word today. We thank you, oh God, that the answers to your promises are yes and amen. Can you move mountains out of our way? Yes and amen. Can you take us from one season to the next? Yes and amen. Are you still the God that gives miracle signs and wonders? Yes and amen. Are you still the God that gives breakthrough and open doors? Yes and amen. Are you still the God that has a purpose and an assignment on our lives and an assignment on that hurt and an assignment of on that frustration, oh God, yes and amen. We know you're not through with us, oh God. How do we know? Because we're still here and we're still standing. You didn't let it break us, oh God. You didn't let it destroy us, oh God. We still have our sound minds. And so we thank you, oh God, that we can reach up and grab and receive your promises over our lives. We can reach up and grab, oh God, that you're still yet moving. We, we can reach up and grab, oh God, that you're still yet doing and you're still yet performing your works in our life, oh God. We reach up and grab it and we say thank you, oh God, that we will have a testimony from this. We reach up and grab oh God, that we will have a reason to tell you hallelujah yet again. You are not done with us, oh God. You are the potter and we are the clay and you are yet still molding us. You are yet still transforming us, oh God. And you are yet still doing a new thing and we thank you for it, oh God. We rest in your promises, oh God. We rest in your presence, oh God. We rest knowing that you never leave us and you don't forsake us. We rest knowing that your hand is yet upon us. We rest knowing that your eyes are yet upon us, oh God, and you won't leave us. These situations, oh God, these losses didn't catch you by surprise, oh God. You you knew, you knew what was coming, oh God, long before you formed us in our mother's womb and you have protected us, oh God. You have surrounded us with your angels. You have given us your peace, oh God, and your promises that we will have comfort for the discomfort. You will give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, oh God, and you will give us beauty for ashes. And so we thank you that the beauty is yet coming. We thank you that the glory is yet coming. We thank you that the praise is yet coming. We thank you, Lord God, that the hallelujah is yet coming. We thank you that the thank you, Jesus, is yet coming, oh God. We receive it right now. And we thank you, Lord God, that, there's, that you're still the God of suddenly and that it won't take you long, oh God. We thank you that you're taking us from labor to delivery. I hear that for someone right now. You feel like the pain is too much to bear. You feel like you've been groaning too long. God says, I'm taking you from labor to delivery. If you will yet still hold on, I'm going to birth something from this. And then you're going to birth something from this. If you will just yet and still hold on, if you will just yet and still trust me, lean not to your own understanding, but solely depend on me and solely lean on me. And behold, I will do a new thing. And behold, I will perform my great works. And behold, you will see my glory in your life. That we bless you. We thank you. Forgive us for the times, oh God, that we gave up. Forgive us for the times, oh God, that we wondered. And we thank you, Lord God, that your grace is sufficient. And we can stand flat footed today and say that you are still good and you are still God and you are still working it out for our good. We thank you, oh God, that your hand is upon our lives and that there will be glory after this for someone who's hurt and disappointed today, oh God. I speak peace and I speak joy. For someone who is worried today, Lord God, I speak your holy wisdom. Your direction today, oh God. For someone who's wondering how they're going to make it, I speak your provision today, oh God. And just like you changed Naomi back from Mara to Naomi, oh God. And just like you gave Ruth a testimony, oh God. And just like you took Jesus from the garden of Gethsemane all the way to reigning on your right hand, oh God. Do it for every single listener, oh God, right now. Let them know that there will be a victory after this. I pray, oh God, that they're, they're strengthened and that their strength is renewed. I pray, oh God, that they're not going to give up. But all the more they're pressing into your presence. That all the more they're pressing into your word. And that all the more they're pressing into your glory. Show your power in their lives, oh God. 
Show them that your hand is upon them and show them that you haven't forgotten about them, oh God, that we will glorify your name and we'll bless your name and we'll thank you, oh God, and we'll give you honor, oh God, new levels of honor, new levels of honor, oh God, not just publicly, but privately, oh God. We're going to do the work, Lord. We're going to partner with heaven for our healing. We're going to partner with heaven for our breakthrough, oh God. We're going to partner with heaven for a mind renewal and a mind regulation, oh God. We thank you that chains are coming off. We thank you that giants are falling. We thank you that mountains are moving and that we are being set free. We walk in your freedom. We walk in your freedom. We walk in your freedom for whom the sun sets free. It's free indeed. We're no longer bound by that loss or by embarrassment or by shame because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We thank you that we're no longer bound, oh God. We thank you that we're no longer bound, oh God. You're just taking us to new levels. You're just taking us to new levels. You're just preparing us. And we receive it right now, God. We thank you that you're sending your joy. We thank you that you're sending your peace. We thank you that we don't have to wrestle with those sleepless nights anymore. Anxiety is fleeing at the name of Jesus. Tears are drying because we're calling on the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that your word will not return to you void. Everything you've declared today, we thank you, oh God, that it is so. And so it is. We celebrate today, God, believing that it's already done. That smiles are coming back to our faces and, and joy is coming back to our lives, oh God as you move us from famine to abundance. Where there was lack, oh God, we now have your provision. Where there was discontent, oh God, we now have your joy. And we thank you for it, God. We thank you for it, God. We thank you for it, God. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray and we give you glory, oh God. Hallelujah and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, guys, I thank you for spending your Monday evening with me. I know I went a little long, but is that new? I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for hanging in there to the end. I'm supposed to make announcements now. We 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 gonna try to get through them. Um, don't forget to join us next month, next of uh, on fourth Monday for our next Bible study. We finished the lost portion of Ruth, and now we're going into love and legacy. We can't wait to reach new levels as we study God's word. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that this word was written thousands of years ago, but it can still read life into our situations today? That's why I love his word so much. So join us next month on fourth Monday as we dive into the next segment of our Ruth series, which is love and legacy legacy um first and third wednesdays you can meet us on our prayer call um you can catch the replays on youtube you can connect with us on instagram you can connect with us on facebook you can also get our newsletter and that is all i love y'all thank you so much we're going to keep praying for you please keep praying for us and we just can't wait to hear those testimonies and those hallelujahs as god is changing your name and changing your story we love you god bless you we'll see you soon